some of the tools that we use as document examiners. There's a digital microscope that we use. This is an example of one. This is from a company called Zarbico in uh, New Jersey. It's called MyScope. It's a very high-end digital microscope. It has a lot of capabilities. It allows us to, to uh, hold that over a document and capture the image right on the computer. Some of the images that I'll be showing to you, I captured using that my, my scope. We, ha we use optical microscopes. These are what you might call a standard microscope. On here, it has a boom, what's called a boom arm. And the boom, what the boom arm does is it allows us to hold the, le the lens or the eyepiece over the document rather than close, so it gives, gives a better view. We have what are called IR and UV scopes to allow us to use ultraviolet light and infrared light to look at a document. We have just a little loop. Many of you who have done photography or other type of examinations where you need to be able to look at things closely, you may be familiar with a loop which magnifies 10, 15, 20 times. There's what's called a NIST, National, In National Institutes for Standards and Technology is what NIST stands for. They, they set up what all of our, uh, how, how, what, what is a meter, what's, a, what's an inch, and so on. And there are standard rulers that, that are graded down to 1 64th of an inch. We use those in order to measure our writing we, so we can do comparative analysis. Photoshop. Adobe Photoshop is one of the most powerful tools that we use. I'll be showing you some images where I called up, we, I shot the image using a MyScope microscope that saves it to the computer. Then I call it up in Adobe Photoshop. And in Adobe Photoshop, you can enlarge the image. You can change the color. You can take one signature and overlay it on top of another signature. So you can see our, how similar they are. It's very, very powerful software. A computer, well, obviously we use computers. We use computers for Adobe Photoshop. We use computers for a whole host of different things. Uh, we use it for writing our invoices. We write it for writing, use it for writing our reports. Um, we use a flatbed scanner. And the way, one of the reasons we use a flatbed scanner is that we want to be able to take the document and store it into the computer and then be able to bring it into Photoshop and, and manipulate it, clip out the signatures, or what we call crop out the signature. We want to be able to change the color. We want to do a lot of things to the document without destroying it. So when we store the image on a flat, using a flatbed scanner, it captures that, and we can bring it into the computer and play with it and even mess it up. And if you mess it up, you throw it away and scan it again. You, there's no harm done to the original document. This thing called ESDA, Electrostatic Detection Apparatus. It's used for what's called indented writing. So you can see what one of the things we look for is, if, let's say you write on a pad. When you write on a pad, it puts an impression on the page below it. One of the things that document examiners will sometimes do is get a copy of that pad and then look at the, the indentations on the page below that'll tell them what was really written there. Or was there something else written and the page torn off? It's used for collecting evidence. They're very expensive. They cost, I think the base price is around $7,000 and they go up to like 20 or more. And then the VSC. But the, v, the VSC is looking for, uh, looking at the documents using ultraviolet and infrared light. Both of these devices uh, are made by a company called Foster Freeman. They're a British company. They're exceedingly powerful. Uh, at the National Association of Document Examiners Conference this year in Montreal in May, there's going to be a seminar on how to use both of these devices, the, the ESDA and the VSC. It's Visual Spectral Comparator. That's what the VSC is used a fair amount. There's a lot of research, there's a lot of research being done with, with, the, uh, with the ESA. One of the more complex uh, problems to solve in document examination 
is to determine if you have lines crossing each other, which one was written first. It's a very complex problem. There's a lot of literature on it. The ESDA can be used to help solve that problem. So can the VSC. There, and interestingly enough, if you have, if you have a, something that's written and you have a signature, say, that's written and part of the signature goes over the original writing, the question is, which came first? Did someone take the signature and then write something to make it look like that person wrote it? Or did the person write it and, this, and put a signature on there? So there's a lot of qu question that comes into play, and it's not a very easy situation to solve or problem to solve. I've even put together some, some samples where I know the, 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 the sequence of the writing, that pen A was used before pen B, and you look at it under the microscope and it looks like pen B was used before pen A because of the type of inks that were used.